became president. His wife looks like Stalin's housekeeper. And if you want an America with a first lady, the lady that walks around looking like Stalin's housekeeper, well, my friends, vote for Bernie Sanders. I'm making it very personal. I'm making it very personal because it's very personal for me. Because I have spent my entire life, once I awakened, to being an anti-communist. And I stand before you today on this microphone telling you I have spent my entire life as an anti-communist once I have seen the murderous individuals for what they are. They destroy everything in their path. They destroy everybody who has succeeded in any way. They decimate a society. They steal from those who create, and they give it to those who do nothing with it. And all the money flows to the Politburo leaders, those at the top. They are the ones with the limousines. They are the ones with the country homes. They are the ones with the absolute power. But, you know, it's very hard to teach this to people who grew up with no history. So let's go to some of the callers and see what they have to say. Uh, let's begin with Angelo on WABC. Go ahead, Angelo. Hey, Michael. I'm a student at an arts college in New York, and I swear I'm the only conservative in this school. And from listening to your show, I, you say to challenge your professors, challenge your peers, and I do it on a daily basis. And I believe me, I... I have no friends. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And when it well, you're, you're well, you're in very good company. Let's put it to you that way. It's better to walk alone than to hang around with morons. Yep. And when I argue with these people, I tell them, I say, listen, if you think Bernie, think, number one, I don't even think Congress would even allow Bernie to pass some of his agendas that he wants to pass. Well, let's pause right there because that's an interesting question. Has it has that stood in the way of Barack Obama, the communist revolutionary? Uh, in most cases, no. But I mean, no. He wrote, he said, "I have a fountain." He said, "I have a pen and a BlackBerry." What does he need Congress for? He set the stage for an absolute dictatorship, which I hope, by the way, when Trump becomes president, will be used by Donald Trump. I hope Trump uses an iPhone and a pen to pass legislation and bypasses the communists on the Democrat side and 80% uh, of the Republican side. Back in a minute. Camelot is back. And you can have it if you want it. Or if you want communism, you can have that if you want it. Now, there's been big changes in the media as a result of this. Fox News and old Roger Ailes lost. They gambled and lost. Uh, whatever her name is, Kelly with the hairdo, <clears throat> is the portrait of Doriana Gray. Her face is literally changing as she fails. She tried to rip uh, Trump apart in the first debate. Then he didn't show up at the, one of the debates. And old Roger Ailes thought that it was all a joke. But the fact of the matter is, if Trump gets elected, as I hope he will, Fox will not have been the kingmaker. It will be a sign of the waning power of Murdoch and Ailes and the rise of talk radio if Trump becomes president. And no one has more securely or such supported Donald Trump than I. And I did so for one I never supported a candidate in my entire 21 years. You say, well, why are you supporting him? What are you getting out of it? Nothing. I've only met him once. But I'm for a builder all over a destroyer. We have a very clear choice here between a builder, Donald Trump, and a destroyer, Bernie Sanders. Has Bernie Sanders ever built a product? Has he run a business? Has he provided a service that anyone ever needed? No. He has gotten where he is purely on hatred and class warfare. And look how far he has gotten, which shows you how far the American electorate has fallen. More to come about the revolution comes to America on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282, Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity, Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, 
And here he is, Michael Savage. We will not allow back into the White House a political party which is so beholden to the fossil fuel industry that they cannot even acknowledge the scientific reality of climate change. Let it go. It's ready for the battle. All right, you get the picture. That's it. I think you got the picture of what I'm trying to say. The revolution has come to America. So here are the questions for the day on the Savage Nation. The title of the show is Revolution Comes to America. And I told you earlier <clears throat> that to me the soul of America is clearly up for grabs. Trump, Trump the builder represents America's hope. The Democrat Party, whoever it may be, the corrupt Hillary or the destroyer, communist Bernie, they represent the other side, the socialist slash communist revolution, period, end of story. I've been studying this since I'm 18 years old, incidentally. I know a little bit about it. I know how this worked in the Soviet Union. I know how it works in Cuba. I know what it's done in South America. And yet it's never really come to America. America has flirted with socialism. And right now is flirting with socialism again with Bernie Sanders. Hillary Clinton's not far behind. It's a choice between a Marxist and a Leninist, by the way, which can be explained rather easily. And I go into it in Government Zero, the book from last autumn. But, I mean, <laughs> let me ask you some questions. Do you even know what a socialist or a communist is? Bernie Sanders talks about a political political revolution. What does he mean? Is the country about to embrace full socialism? What would you do to stop it? And as far as Hillary goes, her loss was more devastating than imagined. Do you think she's finished? Were you surprised that Trump brought up the drug issue in his victory speech? Where do you think he got that from? Why do you think he brought up the opiate addiction? Do you think Trump has the momentum to go all the way to the nomination? And then out of the side shadows comes Bloomberg, who doesn't stand a chance in you-know-what of winning, but he's doing it to hurt Trump because he's jealous of him. Trump is taller than him. Trump has a nice-looking wife. Trump has nicer shoes. Trump has a nicer uh, car than Bloomberg. <clears throat> now let's go on to the Zika virus, which I haven't talked much about. But as a result of my talking about it yesterday, my new ebook. Diseases Without Borders, shot to number one in, in the health uh, book area. Have you had any personal experience with the Zika virus? Do you think Zika concerns are overblown? I don't, by the way. The phone number here is 855-400-7282. I've got a couple of great callers from here. Let's go to WABC. Jason, what's your comment, please? What's on your mind? Yeah, I'm confused. As a 40-year-old Jewish American kid that came from... Uh, family from the Schmatter business. My grandfather was a, a union rep for the Textile Cutters Union. They were very pro revolutionary, pro labor, almost communist. I, I mean, thank God it broke with my father, but I don't understand why there's so many Jewish Americans that, like, like Bernie Sanders in that age, even to this day, have like those pro communist, uh, like, I don't understand, like the traditions. and. No, no, I, I understand like, you're groping in a very important topic. What you're saying is if they've done so well in this wonderful country, why do they hate it so much? Let's, let's cut to the chase here. Why do they hate the system that gave them so much wealth? So let's pick up some examples. Woody Allen, Bernie Sanders, Larry David, Harvey Weinstein, Katzenberg. Do they fit the bill of what we're talking about? Yes. Okay. It's a very embarrassing question that nobody would take on but me. But I've asked myself this question for many a decade. I know the answer. There's a simplistic comedic answer, and then there's a serious answer. The serious answer is that Jews of that generation identify as victims, minorities who are victims of an oppressive society. And so they look around, and they say, well, you know, we want equality in America. Now, they don't practice equality in their own lives. If they can make a good living, they do. If they can move up. Uh, to a better house they have. If they can lead a better, more rich life, they do. But yet they continue to espouse the rhetoric of a socialist. Isn't that what's grading you? 
I think he's dropped. I think he's just hanging on and listening. So let's take a guy like um, Larry David. Larry David was a smart comedy writer who wrote Seinfeld. He allegedly has made a fortune in excess of $1 billion. A wise guy from Brooklyn like Bernie Sanders, the same cut from the same ice cream uh, bar, same exact mentality. So why would a billionaire like Larry Sanders put himself out there for a socialist slash communist like Bernie Sanders? Shouldn't he understand that if a commie wins, taxes are going to be up to like 95%? Does Larry David want to pay 95% of his income to the federal government? I don't think so. But he may know something that we don't know. He may know what Microsoft knows. He may know what Facebook knows. He may know what many, many wealthy people in this country knows, like Warren Buffett, that they don't really pay the same taxes as the working man. Uh, I and you would pay 39.6% X, 39 of my f income to the federal government. Here in the communist state of California under uh, the great Governor Brown, I pay 15% state taxes on top of 39 or 40. So let's round it off. 40 and 15 is only 55% of my income, right off the top to the gangsters who run the federal and state governments. That's nothing. That's chicken feed compared to what would happen under Bernie Sanders. We have the highest corporate income tax in the entire world. Did you know that? Did you know that there's no other nation on earth that penalizes corporations as much as this country does? So then you get guys who take their businesses overseas and pay very little in American taxes. They're all for socialism. They love socialism because it doesn't affect them. It affects somebody else. And it's a good way of placating the people on the bottom and keeping those at the bottom from eating them alive. So that's the second part of the picture. In other words, if you buy off the poor with handouts in a welfare state, what you're doing is buying protection from them, breaking into your house and killing you, in plain English. So they're in favor of a welfare state because they feel the welfare state keeps the dangerous lower classes away from them, at least for a little while anyway, until the middle class runs out of money. So there's very complicated reasons for the question, uh, for the, as an answer to these questions. But the fact of the matter is there's a real danger here, and that's why I'm talking about this. Phone number, 855-407. I mean, see, if I, keep, if I go on with this, it becomes too academic to most people, and they don't want to hear it. They, it's, it's not easy listening to talk about Sanders as a stone-hearted communist because you won't grasp it and you won't accept it. You say, well, how come the news media doesn't point that out? Because 99% of them think the same way. Most people who write columns or work as so-called journalists are f radical left-wingers. Why is that? <clears throat> They're losers. They're losers in plain and simple. They make a very low amount of money. They are jealous of anyone who's able to buy a better apartment than them in San Francisco or drive a nicer car or go on a nicer vacation. And so they identify with the underclass. Even though they're working for a newspaper, they still espouse the same mentality as the loser, the loser communists. And they think that when there's a revolution, they will be part of the winner class. They won't be part of the winner class. If they don't go along with what the new government wants, they'll find out how nice the new government is. But again, you need to know the history of the Soviet Union to know what I'm talking about, and most people don't understand the real danger. So let's take some calls from uh, those who do know. KSFO, Helena, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Uh, thank you. I want to thank you for exposing the communists in our country and destroying it. My father was Russian. He fought in a white army against the Red Army and was yes. the key person to escape in 1921. Yes. And the other thing I wanted to say that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton never lose an opportunity to attack the Republicans and demonizing us. And it's about time for our candidates to combine the Democrats with the socialists because they are... In other words, you're glad that I'm pointing out that Bernie Sanders' rhetoric is not really about fairness. It's about communism. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Definitely. It's, 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 that's why they want to take our country. That's right. I can look right through that man. I grew up with that type of personality, and I know how dangerous he is, and I know what will follow if that man...